What's up everyone, Steven here from TechMaker Studio. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to build a simple Node.js API using Express. This is a beginner-friendly tutorial that we're gonna do here on our channel. We're constantly putting out videos that explore all sorts of new technologies that are coming out. We do beginner tutorials, we do advanced workshops everything in the middle and we're always looking at new technology everything from react node next.js tailwind css all this kind of stuff up to web3 topics like solidity ethereum development um, all that kind of stuff so if you like that kind of thing be sure to subscribe to the channel but anyway let's go ahead and jump in i think this is going to be a two-part tutorial because in this episode we're going to cover basically querying data and in the next part we're going to look at creating and updating data but Anyway, if that's all foreign to you, don't worry about it. Um, what we're gonna do first, I've got a terminal open here. I'm assuming you at least know how to use a terminal um, and you have Node.js installed. Um, if, you're, if you're at that point, you should be good to go. I'm gonna make a new directory here and I'm gonna call this node, if I can type, API demo. Still can't type, okay, here we go. We'll change down into node API demo. And I'm just going to go ahead and in initialize a new um, npm or node project. So we'll do npm init, and I'm just going to say dash y to accept all the defaults. And I'm going to go ahead and say npm install express. Essentially, express is the most popular API or server technology um on node if you're going to run any kind of web server you're probably running express with that little bit of setup out of the way i'm going to go ahead and open this up in a code editor here and i'm going to do a couple of things so first of all let's create a file if we look inside of package.json you'll see this scripts uh section and we'll see that it's saying that the main file it's expecting is an index.js and I'm gonna go ahead and in here, I'm gonna have a new script called start. Don't be intimidated by all these config files. It's just JSON and it kind of, you'll get, you'll get the hang of it if you're not used to this sort of thing. And all we're gonna do in here is tell it, when we run this script start, we're gonna tell it what to do. And we're gonna say, run this command node index.js, pretty basic. Um, let's open a new terminal window in VS Code here. And so now if we come in here and say, well, for example, you can actually just run node index.js and what that's gonna do is execute that JavaScript file if it existed, which it doesn't right now. And all we've done so far by modifying the script is make it so that we can run npm start. And it's basically gonna to try to do a similar thing and it's gonna throw a bunch of errors because we don't actually have that file. Um, so what we should do is create that file. So if we run in here and say index.js, so now we have this file. Let's clear up our terminal here, run npm start. And it's basically gonna say, hey, we did that, but it doesn't do anything. So it actually doesn't do anything. So if we wanted to do something super basic, we could just say console.log, here I am. And now if we come down in our terminal and we run node index.js we get here i am and if we say npm start we get a little bit more output but basically it's doing the same thing it's it's got a little bit more setup going on and then we get here i am so basically it's running the same code okay no big deal what we want to do is actually set up express so that we can kick off some kind of server so to do that what we're going to do is say const express equals require Express and I need to spell const correctly, which I still haven't done. And then what we're gonna do is say const uh, app equals express, something like that. Then all we need to do is say something like, um, well, let's set up a let's set up a port const. <laughs> Uh, having a hard time spelling today. Const port equals, and we can make it anything you want. The number really, I mean, there's a range of numbers that, you know, it can be between, but normally it's like 3,000, 8,000, 8888, you know, whatever. You could basically make it any number in some range that you like. And then we can say um, app.listen, and we're gonna say that port. And then we're gonna give this just an anonymous function here and say console.log 
and we're gonna print out listening on port and then pass in the port okay so now if we run npm start we'll see listening on port 567 and if we come over here and we refresh we'll see cannot get slash so what's interesting about this is this is actually the server technology working. So if we put in anything over here, it's gonna tell us we can't get that route. So I've always liked this approach in programming called follow the errors. And so what this is telling us just out of the gate is hey, you haven't defined anything uh, that's supposed to happen when you try to get slash. Now, if you're not familiar with this get concept, this corresponds to a notion in programming called CRUD, which is create, read, update, and delete. And typically what you have is, and this should make sense, right? Like basically any kind of item, right? Like let's say we have a t-shirt that we're selling in an e-commerce store. You should be able to create new t-shirts in the database. Once you've created one, you should be able to read about it. Once you've got one in the database, you should also be able to update it if you have the correct user privileges and so on. And then maybe when you're done selling a shirt, you should be able to delete it. You know, you can think of that logic applied to just about anything. So in typical uh, HTTP land, which is how the internet operates, you have the correlation of this would be something like um, post, get, put, or sometimes you'll see uh, patch, and then delete, pretty much like that. Um, so what we're wanting to do here is actually tell our server, um, what do we do when we receive an HTTP get request on a certain endpoint. And by endpoint, we just mean slash in this case. Um, if we had like slash articles and then we pass in an ID, then that would be a different endpoint. Um, it's sort of just API terminology. But anyway, let's define what, to ha what should happen when we get a get request. So we can say app.get. And essentially what we're gonna do here is like define an anonymous function well, first of all, we need to define the route. So we're gonna say, when we have a get message on slash or the root path, and then we're gonna have this request response, and then we can say uh, response dot uh, send, and then we can pass in anything we want. So we could just be like, yo, and we have to restart our server, which you can do with Control C, and then just cycle up, hit npm start again. And if we refresh, now we've got yo. We can also do the same thing for anything, right? So we could do slash about, and we could say like, uh, what do you want to know? And again, we'll have to restart the server each time, and then we'll say about, and now we're telling it how to respond to the about path. So one thing you might be curious about is what are these request and response things? I'll let you look at this a little bit further, um, but we can log these things out and just kind of look at what's in there. Um, and this will log out on our server side over here. And so you can see it just logged out a whole bunch of junk. We're not gonna go through, but it's got a whole lot of stuff in here related to the actual request. Like you can see the headers, the location all this is coming from, so on and so forth. Um, we don't need to do this right now. I just wanted to show you that you could in case you're curious and wanna do a little bit of digging and understand how things work. One thing that we are gonna want to do, we don't need this about page. Let's just say um, we have some collection of dogs. Okay, this is gonna seem silly, but follow along. So we have dogs and then we have an ID here. So we wanna be able to look up info about a specific dog. Um, so what do you want to know about dog? And then let's pass in the uh, request.params.id. Let me actually do this, that, so that we can actually see this wrapping. Uh, this video may be a little bit longer than 10 minutes, so forgive me if it's like 12 minutes and 42 seconds, but uh, shooting for 10 minute tutorials here. 
Okay, so we have this app.get dogs ID. If we restart our server, we can come over here and go to slash dogs slash 45. And you can see, what do you want to know about dog45? Cool. So what we see here is how to pass variables in through the URL. So you have this syntax of colon ID, and then that becomes request.params_id. This could be anything you want. So you could be like ASDF, and then you could say, what do you want to know about params ASDF? Uh, same thing applies. It doesn't matter. This is literally just a variable, and you're naming the variable and then calling the variable here. Um, let's go with ID because ASDF doesn't make any sense. So let's suppose that we have a collection of dogs. So we have const dogs equals an array. And we're going to do this in a really kind of silly way. Um, but we're going to have like uh, name, uh, Jim Bob, and then we'll have uh, breed husky. And I feel like we need like a crazier name for that, but it's okay, whatever. Um, Huskies always have bizarre names to me anyway. So let's say Sam and it's a lab. Okay, cool. So what I would like to do is instead of sending, because this is an API, we don't wanna just send text, we wanna send JSON. So on get slash, what we're gonna do is just send dogs. Okay, so let's check that out. So if I go to just slash, we've got our you know JSON rendered out nicely. And this won't look good for you by default unless you go install like a JSON viewer. I have JSON view here, so um, if you're curious. So what we could also do is on our get uh, dogs ID, what we could do is say res.send or actually JSON. And then what we could do is just dogs and you know this is not how you would normally do this normally you'd have some sql lookup which we will in the next episode but here since we just have this silly little like uh array what we could just do is like an array accessor and so we could do uh, parse int because it's probably a string by default if i'm guessing of uh what is it request.params.id and then do minus one okay so if we go to slash dog slash one, we should get the Husky, if I restart my server here. Uh, we should get Jim Bob the Husky. And if I go to slash two, we get Sam the lab. So that's our read portion of our API. So we have create, read, update, delete. So far, all we're doing is reading. And again, in the next episode, what we're gonna do is set up Mongo with a, a library called Mongoose, and we're gonna actually be able to insert things into the database and then read them back. Alrighty, so this 10-minute uh, tutorial is just now about 13 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it here. As always, uh, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and watch out for part two coming out probably tomorrow. Um, in any case, I'll talk to you in the next episode.